But first, Washington watchdog Gretchen Hamill, who says the president should take the blame instead of pointing fingers. Also here, our own Sandra Smith. Uh, though, I want to start with you, Gretchen. Um, I, you know, at some point you would think the White House would fall on its sword, but uh, they put a pretty happy face on this report. Yeah, they put a pretty happy face on this report, but they're also trying to use this report as a talking point for their agenda, and an agenda that, increase, that includes increased spending and more burden on the taxpayers when it comes to tax dollars and, how, and borrowing more money. You know, uh, 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 Sandra, it wasn't just the administration. The mass media, you know, I saw a report in New Yorker, the New Yorker, six reasons this wasn't a bad report. It was the best Sorry. contract. You saw that? I, what the heck is going on? I mean, does anybody worry anymore? It was unbelievable trying to find a negative headline on this drop in GDP. I mean, Charles, uh, the media is trying to spin this in every which way it can to make this look like this is not a bad thing. What the White House needs to do is take a long, hard look in the mirror and see that its lack of economic growth policies is what is hurting this country right now. Where's the job growth policies? Right now, we have consumer confidence levels that we just got out this week that are plummeting because people are seeing their paychecks shrink as a result of those, uh, the expiration of the payroll tax cuts. People have less money to spend. They're less optimistic about the future. And the White House doesn't get it. They still think it's about the storm that happened weeks ago. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not sure, to be quite frank, if they think that's it or that makes for a convenient excuse. And, you know, i got to tell you, Gretchen, you, you mentioned the White House more or less, you know, spinning this to their own advantage. Maybe they don't care. You know, uh, during the inauguration address, there was no speaking or no mention of uh, economic growth. It was all the same sort of level of playing field. Let's uh, all be fair and let's all hold hands and sort of divvy up the pot. Maybe this is what happens when you divvy up the pot, the GDP shrinks. Well, there wasn't mention of the economy, and there was no mention of government spending. And here we are. We just went through this fiscal cliff crisis. We are, had a previous conversation on this with the budget, with how we're going to fund their government, with the debt ceiling crisis two years ago. We're looking at a long set of crises here with trying to figure out how we're going to fund the government again, beginning at the end of March, a budget the sequester that's supposed to go into effect and all the administration can continue to talk about is how can we spend more money and what we saw in this report was it gave proof that our our economy is depending too much on government spending and that our economy is living on borrowed time and borrowed money and it feels like we we've, we've been drinking coffee in order to stay up all night and we know that's not sustainable it is not sustainable for us to continue to borrow at this rate that we will start to see our economy contract if we don't get things under control Right. We have to address the fiscal matters, and we have to find a way to cut spending. Otherwise, if we punt it and it's down the road, it's going to be even worse. You know, and Sandra, you started to talk about this, uh, you know, to Gretchen's point. Uh, you know, it feels like the, the economy ultimately will have a price to pay, but it feels like consumers have already sort of heard their alarm clock, and maybe they're doubling up on a coffee, but they're certainly very, very afraid, and that can have a negative impact on the economy too, right? Well, look, a, a couple uh, more big economic numbers that we got out this week. Home, home ownership levels are dropping in this country. Rentals are way up. People are choosing not to own a home anymore. And also we got an oil inventory report that was twice the oil inventories that economies forecast. I mean, people are spending less on gasoline. They're driving around less. And, you know, people are finding themselves in a completely different situation uh, the first month of the year than they were just a, a several months ago. This is going to be reflected in those GDP numbers. I mean, Charles, uh, people are you know, really pulling back their and they're changing their spending habits, and that's going to have a ripple effect on this economy. And the economic numbers that keep coming out prove that, but the stock market keeps sort of shrugging it off because they know the Fed's going to step in as a backstop, and they're going to try to stimulate right. the economy as they have been, and that's why the stock market Sa keeps Sandra, let me ask you, how, surprising, how surprised are you that uh, double-dip recession has re-entered the conversation? I, you know, again, I don't know that anyone was thinking this just a few weeks ago. Well, you know, I, I would say there were some of us who were thinking of it. I, I mean, the fiscal cliff, the CBO warned of it in its report. It said that this was probably going to happen, that we were going to probably see an onset of a recession. It is something that many economists have been warning about for years, years, basically saying that if we did not get this under control when it comes to our government spending and the drag that it's having on the economy, that we are going to see these ramifications. And here we are. Taxes have gone right. up. That's a ramification for the for individuals and for taxpayers. But then we also have the ramifications in our economy, and that's what we're seeing starting to take place. Sandra, uh, real quick, we, we don't have a lot of time left, but 
Do you think the market can stay uh, sort of uh, d disconnected from the economy much longer? Only for the short term. We've got another jobs number coming out. We're still at near 8% unemployment in this country with millions uh, still out of work, can't find work, have pulled themselves out of the workforce. And without people back to work, Charles, they're not buying homes, they're not buying cars. And the stock market can't simply continue to rally based on the low interest rate environment, the money pumping environment right. uh, that it's currently rallying in. We need to see real growth. Ladies, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Thank and as Sandra just mentioned,